In this video, we're going to take a look at the Nissan Frontier T22 V6 engine, oxygen sensor, DTC diagnostic trouble code relating to the check engine P0132, this is our freeze frame code to show where this DTC code occurs so we could see at 25 miles per hour the vehicle was performing and the RPM is at 1475 so we know this code is occurring when the vehicle is driving we also have another DTC code which is P0152 and P0 P0132, P0152. So that's the four code relating to bank one, sensor one, bank one, sensor two, or I should say sensor two and bank one. So we're having problems with both side manifold sensor. And this all has to do with that yellow light, the check engine light. That you would see on your vehicle like this once you see that light turn on you're going to need a scan tool to scan the information inside the computer so you could know what sensor is malfunctioning to cause the engine to not perform like it should so p0132 as we have stated is oxygen sensor in bank one that will be the right side manifold and we're also experiencing another code relating to bank two of the same sensor the oxygen sensor one is placed in the exhaust manifold to detect the amount of oxygen in the exhaust gas compared to the outside air the heated oxygen sensor has a closed end tube made of ceramic zirconia the zirconia generate voltage from approximately one volt in richer condition signal and zero volt in leaner condition signal the heated oxygen sensor signal is sent to the ecu the ECU adjusts the fuel injector pulse width to achieve the ideal air fuel ratio. The ideal fuel air ratio occur near the radical change from 0.1 volt, or I should say 1 volt, to 0 volt. P0132 Bank 1 heated oxygen sensor circuit high voltage is the same as possible p0152 an extremely high voltage from the sensor is sent to the ecu possible cause harness or connection open or short or maybe most likely the heated oxygen sensor itself now you would see on our current vehicle is 186,599 miles at 97,000 miles and 10 years ago the oxygen sensor was replaced replacing the original wide body oxygen sensor with a much slim thin narrow oxygen sensor from an aftermarket caused the vehicle dis to display P0328 rendering the oxygen sensor DTC code. Now that the vehicle is experiencing malfunction DTC code with the oxygen sensor the knock sensor code has not appeared since the oxygen sensor 
is displaying the DTC code that you have just seen. So this is leading me to believe that now we are going to replace those thin body aftermarket oxygen sensor with factory OEM wide body oxygen sensor which are sometimes indicated as low impedance or high impedance oxygen sensor. We're going to replace it and see if we render the DTC oxygen code and the NOx sensor code P0328. The reason the technician is recommending this is because a high impedance oxygen sensor which is the thin body aftermarket that is currently in this vehicle and you're going to see how we're going to test to make sure that it is is currently replacing a low impedance oxygen sensor which is the wide body fact factory OEM Bosch oxygen sensor now that the high impedance oxygen sensor is meeting its maximum extreme. It's relating that information to the ECU and the ECU is thinking that the engine is extremely lean because the voltage have a tendency to fall more to the zero side on the acquisition. And this will cause a lean condition and the ECU might detect a NOx sensor code so we're going to replace this oxygen sensor with the factory OEM one and see what happened. It's now time for us to perform a physical test on the oxygen sensor wiring harness plug for bank one and bank two. So before we could start this procedure, we want to compare the reading from the oxygen sensor that we have replaced at 97,000 mile and with the oxygen sensor that we have removed at 97,000 mile. This is the factory OEM oxygen sensor. It is known as a wide body, low impedance oxygen sensor. And when you take a look at the aftermarket, it's a high impedance oxygen sensor with a thin body. Before replacing the oxygen sensor, it is very important that you perform a continuity test on the wiring harness section for the oxygen sensor and provo provide a physical test on the oxygen sensor to see if it has the ohms resistance according to factory specification. Let's disconnect the harness plug. You always want to make sure you pull apart on the plug and not on the wire because the wire could sometimes become dislocated from behind the pin and this will lead you to a broken circuit. Now we're going to place our voltmeter so we can get a read on the voltage. First we're going to test the heated circuit for the sensor and we're going to start with the left side actually we're going to start with the right side sensor when we take a look at both of these plug we're going to see on the sensor in on the right side we have a brown wire with an orange stripe and in the middle we have a black wire and on the other side we have an orange wire with a black stripe For the sensor on the left side, we have a brown wire on one corner and in the middle we have a green wire and on the other corner we have an orange with a black stripe. Orange with the black stripe is a 12 volt heated wire from the fuse box and that will be a number 15 amp fuse in slot number 14. 
So that fuse will be this third 15 amp fuse and it's located in that position. That's the engine continuity ignition circuit. So we want to take our probe and place it in on this orange and black wire. Now you don't really want to stick this into the plug, into the pin because it's going to cause the connection to become loose when it's to be plugged together. So we're going to use this on the positive side and we have our negative on the ground. Now let's turn the key on and look for a battery volt. So right away we could see a battery volt. So this has confirmed for us that the sensor on the right side, that will be oxygen sensor 1 bank 1, is seeing a circuit for heating and that voltage is 12.34 volts. Now let's get a test on sensor 1 in bank 2 and we want to connect to the same wire and we're going to look for a battery volt and there we have a battery volt again so this has confirmed that the heated circuit for sensor 1 in bank 1 and sensor 1 in bank 2 is in working order. Now we're going to take a test on the brown wire and the green wire that will be these two corners and we want to check continuity between the ECU and the oxygen sensor for both of the plug. So with the key off I just want to place my probe in on those two pin and look for a reading. So we could see our reading is approximately 0.5. Now let's go and turn the key on and retake that test on those two pin which is the brown wire and the green wire So here we could see we have a 1.3. Now we're going to do the same thing on sensor 1. We want to check the circuit. And here we could see a 1.5, 1.7. So this is telling us that the ECU is communicating with the oxygen sensor where it meets the plug of the harness. Okay, so that test was on microvolt, and when we check on regular volts, we could see you're not really getting anything. That's because the ECU is only relating from zero voltage to one voltage to the sensor, and the zero voltage side is a lean condition, while the one voltage side is a much richer condition. Now I want to test the ohms resistance. So we're going to go on the two pin that's farther apart. And we can see on sensor one, bank one is almost a six, 6.3, 6.5 sensor two on bank one, sensor one on, ba on bank two will give us a 6.3. Same thing, 6.3. Now when I take my old sensor that I had and I try to perform that ohms test on the 200, you can see it says five point three so it's approximately the same thing 
but they're all out of range. This is why we're getting a check engine light. Plus, you have to understand the heated circuit is also failing as the vehicle warm up and begin to drive. From what the perimeter shows, the vehicle is always going at a miles per hour and the RPM is above 1,000 RPM. So the sensor could be failing on the heat circuit side and on the signal side. Now what you're going to need to know here is you're going to see we had to cut the wire to remove this oxygen sensor with a normal combination wrench. But when it comes time to reinstall the sensor, you're not going to be able to cut the wire. You're going to have to use a specially designed socket like this for removal and installation. What we have here is two identical Bosch oxygen sensor replacement, direct replacement for this vehicle. So what we want to do is first, when we remove this sensor from the box, is we want to make a comparison to the one that was originally removed at 97,000 miles. Now, at looking at the body and the harness with the plug, looking good, great. These don't have the clips for holding the harness at the rear of the intake manifold. But one thing you're most likely you're not going to see when this sensor is advertised is this part where you have this probe on the end. So when we look at this sensor, which is for the left side of the engine, which will be bank two, we could see that the probe area is a direct, identical looking fitting. The next thing we want to do is to make sure we never touch that area with our finger or moist hand because this will accelerate corrosion of the sensor probing area and it will most likely later on lead to faulty signal and data acquisition. This is the sensor for bank one and this is the most important sensor. This is the sensor that the ECU looks for signal to make performance change. On this sensor, the ECU look to maintain OBD2 emission standards. So when you're looking for that racing performance and fuel efficiency, this is the sensor that is most important. So when we take a look at the probe section on this sensor, we could see it's identical to the one that was removed but it's most different from the emission sensor that is in bank two. So this is something you will have to compare to your sensor when you remove it. This is why when you remove your old sensor, you do not throw them away. You want to make sure you keep them in hand like this. This is the original sensor that was in the factory. We can see it's a genuine Bosch sensor but it has a Nissan media on the side, whereas the sensor that is a direct replacement from the aftermarket does not have a Nissan media on the side. It just specified Bosch, the maker. So the manufacturer, the people who makes this, the company who makes the sensor is Bosch. Then Nissan buys it, put their name on it, and sell it calibrated for this vehicle. Now when I say calibrated, what I mean is that when we test the sensor on the two outer pin at the corner, we want to make sure that we're maintaining within factory ohms. So when we look at our voltmeter, which is already set for ohms resistant reading, we want to place the pin on the outside and we can see on this sensor we're getting approximately a 4.0 fluctuating. So this sensor is approximately 0.1 volt lower than this one. But we still have to take into consideration that this sensor is used for 97,000 miles. This is a new replacement sensor, not from the Nissan dealer, but it's for the Nissan Frontier. 
So we're going to replace the sensor and look for the ECU to have a no check engine light and also a non-display of DTC code P0328 or P0327. Now that was a comparison test of the two OBD2 sensor and what we have compared is that it's approximately 0.1 volt difference in resistance from the ohms reading. So here I have the original sensor that was removed from bank one, that would be the right sensor. And when we take a look at the probe, the testing area, we can see it's most different than the one that was replaced and specify that it is a Bosch. And you could see that Nissan symbol in the sensor so this is telling us that even though this sensor the testing probe which is basically the shield it's not that of a great deal but it is but what we want to take a look at right now is that both of these sensors signify that they're for a Nissan and when we take the ohms reading test on the replacement and compare to the original factory we can see again we have approximately a 4.4 so this is we could basically say it's a little more than a half a volt a half a resistance on the ohm setting what we're going to do is we're going to replace this oxygen sensor with the thin body and we're going to continue driving the vehicle what we're going to look for is to make sure that the ECU does not display a DTC code 327 or DTC code 328 which is associated with the NOx sensor the reason we want to delete this code is due to emission purpose and passing state and government regulation. What we're doing here is we're trying to investigate and figure out if the oxygen sensor could be the cause of a NOx sensor code since oxygen sensors are specified in low, medium, and high impedance. Based upon our experience, these sensor or component parts are considered to be pyrometer. They are heat sensor, not really oxygen sensor. They don't look for oxygen in the exhaust stream. What they look for is an exhaust gas temperature. The ideal exhaust gas temperature for a gasoline engine at wide open throttle is approximately 0 0.880 millivolts and 0 0.910 millivolts from the oxygen sensor when the engine is at wide open throttle. That wide open throttle voltage, micro voltage, is basically the temperature of the exhaust gas in Fahrenheit degrees. So at wide open throttle, you can expect the exhaust gas in the exhaust manifold, where the exhaust sensor probe is installed, to be approximately 880 degrees Fahrenheit to 910 degrees Fahrenheit for a maximum power ratio and a perfect air to fuel ratio at minimum emission standards. Understanding must also be gained that these oxygen sensor really known as pyrometer temperature, exhaust temperature, exhaust gas temperature sensor have a heated circuit in it and what this heated circuit is is to bring the sensor 
to an approximate temperature of 800 to 900 degrees Fahrenheit when the vehicle is cold and this temperature at the sensor sensing element is able to detect the exhaust gas temperature so the ECU can make modification for the fuel injector based on mass airflow consumption. The sensor heated circuit is important for recording and data acquisition of exhaust gas temperature for the ECU to make the necessary fuel modification. In the video description link you're going to see more information on how to remove this oxygen sensor. You're going to notice it's a lot different than the one that's in your vehicle because it has this thin body which is not really recommended for a factory OEM replacement even though it has the factory OEM harness and plug for easy replacement. You might most likely have to deal with this 32 millimeter plug that's associated with this harness because it has to be fitted into it. One more important factor when installing the oxygen sensor you want to make sure you lightly coat it with some anti-seize compound. You don't want to put too much because you don't want to interfere with the continuity with the sensor on the ground. You want to make sure you install the sensor to the plug seeing that it extend into the stream where it will be able to detect exhaust gas from those little openings. Once that sensor is replaced you want to make sure you place some lithium grease when making the plug connection. This will help seal moisture out preventing corrosion of the alloy pin and loss of connection to the ECU or ground circuit that we have tested.